Welcome back guys, I'm Brad, this is my shop. Today's video is going to be knurling, all about knurling, or at least as much as I know about knurling. Um, I've often found that there's not a lot of information out there on knurling, and um, it's, it's just one of the coolest things to do in machining, right? You, you make a nice part, you knurl it, it looks great, and obviously it's very functional. Now, instead of just wasting a piece of material today and, and just making some kind of a demonstration piece, I'm going to fill in the blanks, as I like to call it. Now, I know uh, a lot of you probably feel the same way as I do. There are little things in the shop that aren't right. Okay, you're missing a screw here, you're missing a, a bushing there, or a handle's broken and you have something rigged into place just to get it going. And it gets real annoying, it gets frustrating, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at um, a knurling tool that I have. It's an Eagle Rock knurling tool. It's a scissor, a scissor type, clamp type. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about the knurling formulas, and we're going to make some pieces, some parts, some actual useful things to make the shop that much better. So let's take a look at what we got here, and we'll get started. Alright, the first thing that we're going to be making is a thumb screw for this, right? It's a little binder that will hold our Arbor Press's handle in place. Alright, so that's going to be number one. Now, this is going to be the same exact size as the next piece that we're going to do. And that is over here. So the next piece that we're going to make is going to be a thumb screw to hold this guy in place, right? Now I have one, this is the one that came with the drill press, but the, the knurling is kind of boogered up and it's, a, it's got a little bit of a sloppy fit to it. And to be honest with you, I share this between this and the, the arbor press, so I want to make two fresh new ones, okay? The third thing we're going to do, the, the third piece, is actually going to be three other screws. And this is for my steady rest. Now this one... Again, this, this came with the steady rest, but I only have one, and I don't know if this is an original piece. It, it, it looks like an original piece, although um, I have the same exact telescoping follower rest, and the spec of the screw is, is identical except for the length of the threads. Um, the one on the follower rest is a lot shallower, you know, it's a little shorter, so it doesn't kind of stick up so far like this. It's a lot closer to the thing, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna duplicate that one. I took some measurements, and again, it's the same thing as this, only just shorter. So we have five screws to make: three for here, and uh, and the other two. The dimensions for the steady rest is going to be uh, six twenty-five for the knurling. All the screws have the same length. The knurl length is going to be four thirty-five. All right, this will be a 5 16 18 thread. This guy will be a 3 8 16 thread. And that's about it. Um, both of them, well, I'm, I'm sorry, all of them will be one inch long. I didn't put that measurement here, so. All right, here's our knurling tool. Eagle Rock Technologies, they make Knurlcraft. That's just really their trademark brand. Um, so they make this guy right here. And they're located in Bath, Pennsylvania. So this was this was a close drive to where I live and uh, I called them up, I ordered it and um, they told me when it was done you know they, they told me it would be two weeks, three weeks before they could actually manufacture it. They didn't have any in stock. So they called me up, they said it's ready, come on and get it and that's what I did. Neuralcraft, scissor type knurling tool. This is the K144. It's the heavy duty model, and I'll show you why it's considered heavy duty. Now, besides being just physically heavy duty, right? You can see Eagle Rock Tech Bath PA. This thing is solid, real solid. Make no no mistake about it this is top-notch tooling right here the, you know you get what you pay for um, this was probably somewhere was around 275 bucks uh, with taxes and obviously there was no shipping because I drove there um, 
the reason why I got this more heavy duty one is if you'll see you have an Allen here which will release the, the retaining pins that hold the knurls in so you can switch the knurls out easy now the other ones the, the other the other model which is the the K1201 standard duty has a has a pressed in pin and eventually even the, the guys at um, Eagle Rock told me eventually that will that'll wear out so I believe this is a this is a left hand right so it goes up to a left hand shoulder they make a model that goes in the middle and uh, and on the right they make CNC they make all different type um, shaft size this is a 5 8 shaft to fit into a, a BXA Alorus type holder so that's that's the tool right there. I mean, it's it's weighty, it's beefy, and um, it's just it's awesome. It really is. I've used it a few times, made a couple of things, and I love it. You know, the little experience that I have with it was all positive, was all good. Here's my knurling table. This is really just a spreadsheet that I printed out. Okay, and what it does is it shows all the different types of um, diameters for a given pitch. Okay, so that's 10 pitch, here's 12, 14, so on and so forth. So what comes with the Eagle Rock is a 25 pitch, they're medium knurls, and here's the information we're going to be looking at. Now, I didn't figure any of this, this formula or any of this stuff out. There's a YouTube user out there named Ghosties. Um, hope I'm pronouncing your name right. But he did a really fantastic job. He explained the formula and how to calculate it and provided a, a spreadsheet, actually. Um, so I, I created my own. I used his formulas. I created my own. I, I formatted it the way I want. And I posted it up on the, the Machining YouTube Facebook page in the Files section if anybody wants to go and get it. Um, but what we have here are diameters, okay? So... Whatever diameter you want to turn your piece to, it, it has to be as close to one of these diameters as possible, or the neural won't track properly. It'll, it'll cross, uh, cross track, and uh, it won't look very good. So these are all, you know, the, the, the common measurements, right? You know, you got a quarter, a half, three quarters, one inch, so on and so forth. And this is the closest you know the closest measurements to them so for instance if we're if we're turn if, if our piece needs to be an inch right it has to either be an inch and six thousandths or you could go slightly under 993 or you could go a little bit higher to uh, an inch 19 thousandths so you get the picture whatever diameter your piece needs to be needs to be as you have to find the closest match to that okay so looking at our drawing, okay, for instance, this one right here, this diameter is 625, so we'll look for the closest thing to 625, and right here, 624, okay, so we'll make, we'll turn that piece down to 624, and then when we knurl it, it should come out, again, should come out correctly. So let's get started. All right, the order operations is going to be like this. We're going to turn this diam. First, we're going to mark out the knurling section and the threading section, and then we're going to turn the diameter down of the threading section and then do the knurling. So we need 565 thousandths for the threading portion. So we have the, f you know, I'll touch off with this facing point right here. Set up my mag indicator. All right, I set up my mag base. I established a zero point at the face. Now we're going to move in 565 thousandths, which will be the length of the threaded portion. So one, two, three, four, five, sixty-five, and we'll just get it right in there. All right, that's good. Now we're going to mark it.
All right, for the 5 16 diameter, I'm going to make this 310 thousandths to make a nice close thread. Seventy-five, eight seventy-four. So let's feed in a little bit here. See if it measures 310. Yep, just about. I got to trim this little tenon down here now because it, it, I made it a little bit big. So we're at. Hmm, let's move this out of here. Get an accurate measurement. Nope, 625. That's fine. 625, we need to be at 565. <clears throat> so, 60 thousandths. I have my mag indicator set up. That face is zero. Let's take some, uh, some cuts here. <laughs> Five sixty-five. All right, we're going to get ready now to mark out the end position of the knurl, and then we'll cut a relief groove in here and thread this. Uh, I'm going to single point it because I don't have a die, and then we'll knurl it, and we'll be done. There's our zero point. 
Alright, set up on the zero point, I'm going to scribe a line uh, 435 thousandths more over. So, one, two, three, four, thirty-five. Alright, I've touched off and we're going to uh, start turning. Feeding in 50 thousandths right now just to get a, an established mark. Now we have to turn this down to 624 in order to make the neurals work. Eight twenty four. <laughs> Two hundred thousands to go. Dead nuts. For this last cut, I'm going to increase the speed. And slow the feed. Looking for 624, survey says. Six twenty-four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna groove this. I'm gonna groove it two, maybe two lengths away to give me enough room uh, to put my knurls. One thing I do want to do. Put a little chamfer on this. Almost looks like a piece just sitting there, right? myself a small little groove 
for my threading relief. Now I'm going really easy on this, a couple of thousands at a time, because it's such a thin diameter, and I don't have it supported with a live center. I think that's good. All right. I'm gonna get this. Set, I'm gonna get the gearbox set up for threading. Get the tool set up. All right. We need 18 threads per inch. So we locate 18. Okay, 18 and B. Okay, B, 18. We're good. We're ready to thread now. <clears throat> I have loaded up my Arthur R. Warner uh, threading tool. Now this has high speed steel inserts, little threaded inserts, and this tool has um, both ends except one of these inserts. This is for outside threading, and the, the back end uh, holds, holds it this way. Okay, so it flips it this way for internal threading. Arthur R. Warner, really good stuff, made in the United States, made right here in Pennsylvania, in um, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Same place as Rolling Rock Beer. Although I don't know if Rolling Rock is either still around or still in Latrobe, so I don't know. But we're going to touch off and do our normal normal threading operations. Compound is at 29 and a half degrees. I'm going to feed in 10 thousandths on the compound. And we're going to get it on. Now I'm feeding pretty fast here. I never really thread this fast, to be honest with you. Let's check that with a thread gauge. Yeah, that's 18. All right. So again, I'm I'm kind of running this spindle a lot faster than I typically do. All right. Let's feed in another 10. I got my nut to check it. I don't think it's ready yet, but just see how close we are. Yeah. Not yet. I think we're either there or very close. Oh yeah, we're there. No slop. That's nice. All right, let's put a chamfer on this and get set up for knurling. I'm gonna use the threading tool just to put a slight chamfer on it. One of the things that I like to do after I knurl is clean all the 
crap out of here. And there is a lot of chips in here. <clears throat> you know, with knurling, it's it's artistic, you know. It looks pretty. And uh, you want all the chips out of there because any chips will mar it up. It'll make your, your knurls come out really bad. It's funny, this soft steel, the the uh, knurling tool turns this into like a gray paste. Now the second stage, brush your teeth. Alright, they spin freely. That's nice. Now, the most critical, at least in my opinion, the most critical part of all this is to make sure that the uh, the center, you know, the bottom part portion um, of both of these wheels is as centered across this diameter as possible. So you really gotta you gotta kind of turn around and look up the tailstock end here and make sure. Now I'm using, you can't see on camera, but I'm using a flashlight and I'm really dialing this thing in just so it's equally spaced. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> now, the portion that I'm going to knurl is as just slightly less wide than the knurls themselves. So I could basically just leave this in place. Okay? And what I want to do is, now that I've got it, you know, I, 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 I clamp this down and then I just hand tighten that, okay, until it stops. Now the, the full depth of the knurl is going to be a half a turn. So I'm going to just sneak up to it. I'm going to coat this thing with oil and um, I'm going to just turn a quarter turn, let it run its course. Now normally if this was longer, you know, you'd do a quarter turn and then you would either put the power feed on or hand feed it, you know, the length of your knurl. But since it's just going to stay here, I'm just going to kind of sneak up on it and um, try to clean these chips out a little bit because they get embedded in there and they can mess up your knurl. So without further ado, Let's coat these with oil as much as possible and let's go for it. Alright, quarter turn now. Now the last quarter turn. And that's it. Open the clamp up here. reveal our knurls. Now the funny thing about this is you it looks like the knurls aren't deep enough but in reality it's just floating in a in a pool of oil. And you really want to clean out the knurls with a wire brush because there are embedded chips and everything in there. So really what I'm going to do now is I'm going to part this off, okay, 
and I'm going to actually take it upstairs and wash this off with soap and water and it gets all the oil out and then you know you have the oh these feel great these are really nice knurls alright so let me part this off we'll wash it and we'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like The last thing that we have to do is face this. So to do it, I just mounted a 5C collet and we're going to clean this guy up and be done. Freshly honed tool as well. Alright, lock our bed. Feed in with the compound a little bit. bit of a chamfer. <clears throat> now we're going to go wash it and we'll be back. Well here it is. Here's the finished piece. The knurls came out perfect finish is great, the threads are not sloppy, it's made to spec, and uh, most importantly, it works. Um, this is, this is going to go into the steady rest, the telescoping steady rest, and I got two more to make of these, but just to give you a little bit of a close-up on how it came out. Now, I really can't say enough about this knurling tool. I mean, the quality is there, and just the the scissor type, the clamp type itself, it doesn't put any kind of strain on your lathe, on your lead screw. Looks like it came out of the Starrett factory, if you ask me. There's no, there's no cross tracking on it. There's no bent points. There's nothing embedded. Actually, I think I see a couple chips left in there. You know, you got to really wire brush these out. You need a good quality wire brush, I'll say that. Um, so it fans in and, and really distributes the bristles in here and gets any of the, the chips, the packed in chips. <clears throat> so if you are seeing any kind of, you know, irregular shiny spots, that's just packed in chips. But, you know, it, it looks good when you clean them up and you wash the parts. You know, they get so coated with oil and whatnot. So this was a, this was a fun project. And... Now I have two more for the steady rest and the one for the arbor press and one for the the drill press. So I mean I mean it's it's the same thing, so I, I was gonna spare everybody watching me do this over and over and over again. But you get the point and really the purpose was to solve the problem, get these things made, and to to really uh you know talk a little bit about the, the knurling process and the knurling tool. So again, Eagle Rock Bath, Pennsylvania, and A.R. Warner. This is their, this is the kit that I have.
the threading kit. This was pretty inexpensive and, and here's you know here's a shot of uh, of the tool itself. We have this side for outside threads and this for in, inside threads. And the nice thing about these inserts is you just rub them on a carborundum stone or any kind of stone actually and you could refreshen them and sharpen them right back up again. The tool works great. It, it threads really well and uh, I couldn't be happier. So if you're in the market for a good threading tool and, and a, a knurling tool, give them a try. I highly recommend them. Top quality stuff here and your thread, your, uh, your knurls will come out perfect. This is a segment that I like to call the Chip Hall of Fame. There's so many times when I'm making a cut and the coolest chips are coming off the machine. The camera's not picking it up or you know, you're in between shots or whatever. But, you know, this is a testament to a properly ground high-speed bit. You know, look at these things. They're like little springs. I call these the South Bend Propaganda chips. Every time you look in their catalogs, you see these big, huge, curly chips coming down. And you think, man, that's, that almost looks artificial. But, <clears throat> they're just super cool. I just love these things. Here's a little curly cue here. And then this one, this was a big, big hog and cut, probably a hundred thousand, so it was taken off. But this is the kind of chips you'll get if you hone your tool and you grind it properly and everything is set up correctly and you know you got the right rigidity and the speeds and feeds are correct. So there you go. Hope you like my new segment, Chip Hall of Fame study, do a post-mortem on the chips after each project. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. This was a fun project, and I really enjoyed making these little pieces. Um, got some good stuff coming up in the future, some new projects and uh, some new shop upgrades, new tools, so look out for that. Until the next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks.